Hey, I'm Peter Franson from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions. Okay, time to talk about Fallout 4. Oh my gosh, that was... That was... I, I, I was stunned and speechless multiple times because they just did some really cool things I wasn't expecting and brought back a whole bunch of great stuff that I was. Uh, I cannot wait for this game. It looks awesome. Uh, you start out in the pre-war world, which is just such a great idea for the series to give us a taste of the world before the bombs dropped, and then fast forward into uh, the the the, the post-bomb world. You know, 200 years in the future. They haven't told us how that's going to be possible playing the same character in both places, which they have confirmed is the case. Uh, probably some kind of cryogenic freezing technology or something. But the fact that you get to be a character who grew up in the pre-war world and then is experiencing the the world of Fallout for the wasteland for the first time, that is such a cool idea and I think is going to make for some very great character moments, which they seem to be pushing for, but in not all the right ways, in my opinion. I'll get to that in a little bit. The face animation seems to be better, definitely, but still kind of wooden. That's just not a strength of theirs, I don't think. But who freaking cares? Uh, the rest of the graphics are nicely improved. The world looks great. It looks varied. Um, VATS, the VATS system in combat has returned, but instead of, like, freezing everything and allowing you to take all the time in the world to select any body part that you want, it doesn't quite freeze. It goes into a slow-mo where you select body parts and then speed up time time again or no no you you do execute your action still in the slow motion mode um so i'm not sure how i feel about that uh because i just suck at shooters and i'm, I'm not good at thinking and reacting fast you know which is why i tend to gravitate toward rpgs but i'm guessing the game is going to be forgiving enough and rpg enough that i'll still be able to get by just fine um so uh, and i think it will look a little bit more cool and feel a little bit more dynamic and and moving forward you know rather than a complete freeze but uh anyway um the, what we saw of the Brotherhood of Steel armor it looks really cool. Uh, the way you, you move in it feels, it looks like it's going to feel very different. The camera's going to behave a little bit more different to reflect the clunkiness of that armor. And then the, there's, it looks like there's this ability to like do these super jumps or rocket propelled jumps or maybe flying. I'm not sure. They definitely have some moments when you're in a chopper like shooting on what's below you, but I don't know if that's going to be like, it's probably going to be very programmed, kind of like the, the dragon as you're flying around in Skyrim in the the, uh, the uh the the what I can't remember what the name of the DLC is where you get to ride around in dragons but you're not really controlling the dragon and in the footage it looks like you're more manning the gun than you are guiding the helicopter so it's probably not going to you know introduce like a like a saints row grand theft auto type open world flying uh like you you know you you might see in those games but uh, but anyway it still looks really really cool um <sighs> I'm a little disappointed, speaking of kind of like the character and the story and stuff like that, there are only two voice actors for the main roles. Todd Howard confirmed this in the post-show interview. Um, and uh, there's one male voice, one female voice. And granted, they did a ton of voice work, so there's going to be voice acting from the main protagonist throughout the game. Um, but this, I don't like this. I don't like this. This is probably the one thing about the game that I'm like, no, no, no. Um, and the reason for that is I like to be able to create whatever kind of character I want and kind of think of myself as whatever kind of character and personality that I want. And when you've just got one voice actor, especially, you know, like one male voice actor if you want to play male or one female voice actor if you want to play female, then you end up with this Bioware, middle of the road, blah, blah, boring type of personality um, like we got in the Mass Effect games. I thought that the male Shepard was so boring. Female Shepard, a little more interesting just because she was, you know, a little bit butch and just kind of like a slightly different from the average female voice that you would hear day to day. And that's the only thing that's really made her interesting to me. And the Shepard voice I found insanely boring. Same thing with the Inquisitor voice that I chose in uh, uh, in Dragon Age Inquisition. They're just so non-committal and I think that's probably because they want this voice to fit with all different kinds of characters, but then what ends 
ends up happening in my case is it fits with none of the types of characters that I want to play, which tend to be very extreme, like in Dragon Age Inquisition. I wanted a crusty old wizard who wanted to conquer the world! And I didn't have a voice like that, you know? I wanted more choices, more options, and at least if there's no voice acting, I can imagine that voice in my head. What I wish they would have done to innovate in a new way in this game is to, um, is to incorporate voice command technology so that you as a player could read one of those four lines of dialogue out loud and then the character you're talking to would respond. The game would detect which choice you made and the character would respond, and the, 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 char the NPC you're talking to would respond. Would that not be so freaking cool and better I think. Uh, I hope that they, well, I was going to say I hope that they give you the option to turn off the voice of the protagonist, but that's not going to be useful in this game because, well, I guess maybe if you turn subtitles on, but then you're just probably going to have to sit through subtitles. I don't know how that's going to work. Um, but anyway, the, the dialogue options in this game, it's very much like a Mass Effect type setup, and I hate that. I hate it. Um, because not only do you are you stuck with this voice this voice that you know may not represent what you want to be as a character you can't tell what it is that you're going to say you get these very basic options like you know respond and say like a basic question like uh you know uh, what's going on around here, or something like that. And then your character doesn't say what's going on around here. He says something more expansive and more specific. And sometimes in those Bioware games, I will end up selecting a dialogue option because I get one impression about what I'm going to say from the little snippet they give me. But then my character says something that's totally different from what I would want to say playing this character the way I want to play them. And so far from bringing, you know, character depth, this takes away from me my ability to play the kind of character that I want to play. Um, and I think that's really ironic because Todd Howard said uh, both in this in the Bethesda conference and the Microsoft conference you can create any kind of character you want not true if you're limited to these voices all right um, what else oh I, I do like that uh, Todd Howard said that you can that, that's the the guy that's in charge overseeing the entire game Todd Howard that you can walk away or open fire mid dialogue and I think that's nice um, because it, at least then my actions can kind of define you know, what kind of personality my, my character has, even if I feel like the voice and the dialogue options can't. Um, so I do appreciate that. Uh, we've got a dog in this game, which I think is a bit of a novelty. It's not really clear to me what usefulness he serves. You can have him go get things, but I don't know. Can I just walk over and pick that thing up? Or do I get to send him into harm's way into a minefield or something like that? I think that dog's going to die because I'm not a very good shot. <laughs> and I think I'm going to shoot that dog accidentally pretty quickly. Um, so, <laughs> okay, we'll see how that goes. All right, the pit boy has these like collectible cartridges that you can find around the wasteland that have video games on them. So there's one that like is like a Donkey Kong knockoff and one that's like a Missile Command knockoff. I don't know how many of these things there are, but I saw that and I was just like, oh my gosh, one more way that I can lose myself dinking around in this world. Oh my gosh, this is going to be insane. Um, let's see here, what else? Uh, oh, there's going to be a real Pip-Boy that it comes with the collector's edition. They're calling it the Pip-Boy edition, which uh, when I checked last night on Amazon was currently not available. I don't think it's because they sold out because they didn't even have a price next to it, so we'll see. Um, the game, the, the base game, you can pre-order, but not the collector's, the Pip-Boy edition right now, to my knowledge, as I'm recording this. Um, but uh, anyway, this, this, it's like, you know, it's a big hunk of plastic and whatever, and, but you can put a smartphone in there, and they're creating a free app that, that uh, interacts, it's a second screen experience. So apparently you can, if you want, play the game with this app and instead of pulling up your Pip-Boy in the game, you can just do it right on your wrist if you have the, uh, the collector's edition thingy. Um, but, I don't know, I, at first I, when I saw that I was like, oh my gosh. I'm going to pay whatever they ask for this. <laughs> but I spent some time thinking about it and kind of coming down from it. It's like, you know, I don't need that. You know, especially if it's not like really ridiculous. I, I did a search on the, the uh, Handsome Jack collection that has the little, the like remote control clap trap that goes around. That's like 500, but it's more than a console. It's like 500, $600. It's insane. Now this isn't as technologically ambitious. It's got a few little lights on it and a battery, but, but other than that, I mean, it's just a, you know, a chunk of plastic that you attach to your arm. Um, so it probably won't cost near that much, but I mean, I'm still like, uh, I don't know how much I'm willing to pay for this. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, I did a search on Amazon. I can get a wrist strap that will stick my iPhone to my left hand for six bucks, you know, on Amazon. So, 
I'll probably just do that, you know, because I am nerd enough that I would love to have that thing on my wrist while <laughs> I'm sitting in my room playing Fallout 4. But I don't know if I'm nerd enough to tack on an extra 50 to 70 or who knows how much bucks to the price of the game. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But it's definitely uh, something of note to check out. Uh, let's see here. The crafting is super expanded in this game. Every object in the game is useful uh, for deconstructing and then getting components from to do crafting of weapons, of uh, scopes, of uh, all kinds of little gadgets. You can make weapons, houses, you can build entire settlements, you can build and really need to build defenses for those settlements to protect them against raiders that will come. You can establish trade caravan routes between the different places that you build settlements on. There are multiple places to build such settlements on. I mean, this is like Minecraft meets Fallout. I'm going to, like, lose myself in this game. If I didn't, like, you know, limit myself to, like, a few hours each night <laughs> of playing this, I would lose my life in this game. It'll take me I don't know how many hours to complete. Holy crap. Um, anyway... November 10th is when this game is coming out. Cannot wait for it. That date is just, it's going to come just a few days after my Extra Life Marathon, which I even thought about delaying for this, but uh, no, 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 because, you know, nobody's going to want to tune into that stream and watch me play Fallout for 24 hours, which I probably would, and probably totally burn out my PS4 in the process. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> um, some cool things in, in addition to that that they announced. Bethesda, Bethesda Net is a new service that's going to allow mod trading cross-platform. Now they mentioned that specifically for Doom, but it makes me wonder, that, will this possibly work in the future for Fallout 4 mods as well? Now at the Microsoft conference, which I just watched this morning and I'll probably comment on in a, in a different video, announced that mods made on the PC will be playable on, uh, on the Fallout 4 version uh, of, of on Xbox One, um, but I don't know if that's exclusive. To I have to watch that footage again to see if it's exclusive or not. Even if it is, I wouldn't be surprised if this eventually came to a console like PS4, which is what I'm on. Um, but uh, anyway, we'll see. But I think it is a good sign of things to come in the future that that they are planning on, you know, making mods compatible cross-platform, PC to PS4 to Xbox One. That's the plan for Doom at this point, and uh, that would be awesome if they would find a way to do more and more of that. Because as a console game. I've been missing out on mods. Now, it does, you know, it's it's not that big of a deal, but it is something that in the back of my mind I'm just like, ah, nuts, I'm missing out on something there. But anyway, um, I'm gonna get so much play out of just the basic game as it's made by Bethesda. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, they did announce a Fallout Shelter phone game that's available for free right now. Uh, no paywall timers. Uh, he said uh, that you'll probably you'll be. He thinks you'll be pleasantly surprised. I was like uh, saying, oh yeah, I'm gonna I'll download it. I'll, I'll download that. I'll totally check it out. But you know, I I slept on it and I'm like, ah eh, no, I probably won't even bother downloading it. I want to save space on my phone for random videos I might want to you know record. So. I'm not going to do that, but uh, I am disappointed that there was no announcement of Bethesda collections of like Oblivion and Skyrim for PS4 or Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas for PS4. I think that would be great, but I can understand that maybe the timing wouldn't be right. It might steal sales away from Fallout 4. I don't know what the business thinking is there, but selfishly, I, I'm, I want those games upscaled for my PS4. Uh, anyway. All right, so moving on, um, just a couple thoughts that I thought were, were significant philosophically, spiritually, you know, as we're just kind of engaging as, as believers in entertainment. Um, Todd Howard said, entertainment is an, is an essential part of our lives. And I thought, hmm, is that true or is that kind of overhyped talk? And, and uh, as I thought about it, I, my mind went to... Um, Ecclesiastes 5, 18 and 19, which I didn't have memorized, but I had to look up. I knew, I knew kind of where it was. And that says, Behold, what I have seen to be good and fitting is to eat and drink and find enjoyment in, uh, in all the toil with which one toils under the sun the few days of his life that God has given him, for this is his lot. Everyone also to whom God has given wealth and possessions and power to enjoy them and to accept his lot and rejoice in his toil. This is the gift of God. So if we've been given the capacity to uh, enjoy our, uh, our possessions and our wealth, um, then we should do that. That's, that's a gift from God. Um, and then Ecclesiastes 3.1 says, For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. And there's a bunch of different seasons of life described there. In verse 4, 4 it says, A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. And dancing certainly is a form of celebration, a form of entertainment. And interestingly enough, the Hebrew word used there for laugh uh, also means to sport or to play. Uh, so I think that um, 
abs entertainment could absolutely be argued. I don't know if it's an airtight argument, but I think there's it could absolutely be argued that it's that it's an essential part of our lives. But it's one part, and it's not to be prioritized over loving and serving God and those around us as we find those opportunities, as we become aware of those opportunities on a case by case basis. Whether that's interacting uh, with our our family and doing the things that we ought to be doing uh, as 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 family members. Um, or as friends or as members of our church community. We don't want to hold ourselves away and just be focused on self-entertainment. But absolutely, I think it can be argued to be an essential part of life. All right, another thing that I was thinking about while I was just like getting excited about Fallout, I, I wondered to myself, why am I so excited about this game? I mean, okay, well, let's think about the things that you love about the game. You love crafting, you love looting, you love leveling. I, I, I love exploring and uh, I love surprise and wonder and I love the sense of challenge, but that comes without frustration. Why do I love all of those things? Um, because I don't like exploring in real nature. I kind of hate nature, but I love to do it in the worlds of Skyrim and Fallout, but I wouldn't want to live there because it's freaking dangerous. <laughs> so why? Why do I love this game? And I think it's because uh, of, of the difference between work as it is now um, and work as it was intended to be and will be um, in God's eternal kingdom. Right now, work is tiresome and productivity is thwarted. I feel like that every day. Um, I've had to stop this video several times because uh, my boys have had some issues getting along and things that I've had to attend to. Um, and all of that is the, uh, that sense of frustration that comes from our work, the, that comes with our work, the various obstacles that we face, the ways that our productivity is thwarted. That's all the result of sin uh, and, and our choice to just kind of engage in it and give ourselves over to it in the world. We see that in Genesis 3.18 that work is just kind of messed up and it's just going to be difficult um, and, uh, and, and hard and it's going to have the joy sucked out of it by default um, because of sin. Uh, but in eternity, as believers, we won't experience any of the defeat or the pain that work brings to our lives now. And we see that in Revelation 21, verse 4. Um, God has placed in us a desire for, for that kind of life, to, for work, to feel like play, you know, for productivity and creation to feel like play and fun and exploration, you know. He's put that desire in our hearts, I think, so that we'll seek out the solution that only he can provide. And I think that's part of what is meant when Ecclesiastes 3.11 says, he has put eternity into man's heart. Anyway, very excited about this game, and uh, I think it's cool some of the things that it allowed me to process. Hopefully this video has been entertaining and uh, in some way useful to you. And then I hope after you watch this video, you'll go over to ChristianGeekCentral.com and meet some other like-minded or not like-minded folks there as we continue to geek out together and seek the truth. ChristianGeekCentral.com